I'm a big fan of geotagging photos, uh, but the problem is, well, it's easy to do with uh, our cell phone cameras, uh, with uh, smartphones having GPS so often these days. It's not really that easy to do with a DSLR. Now, some have them built in, a few of them. Uh, some others, you can get attachments to do it, uh, but that's kind of clunky and inconvenient. And others, just you just can't. But I went to a seminar on Lightroom at Adobe in San Francisco recently, and they demonstrated the map module. And it turned out it's really easy to do, uh, even with a DSLR, even without a GPS, by having another GPS in your pocket. And you can even use your phone, your phone's GPS to do it, and they demonstrated that. So I wanted to spend this video demonstrating that to you as well. And uh, to do that, uh, you need, I'm going to demonstrate it with my iPhone, uh, iPhone 4S, uh, with an app called Geotag Photos Pro. Uh, this is a 4Pay app. I think it was $4 US, possibly $5. Uh, but there are some cheaper options out there as well. But this, this one works well for me, optimized for photography. And what you do is you just set it to record uh, wherever you are, put it in your pocket and just start shooting with your DSLR. At the end, you um, transfer the track that you recorded to your computer and along with the photos, Lightroom will merge them together and tag each of your photos with the location that you were at the time that you took the photo by using the time codes that are attached to each of the geotag points recorded on your phone. So it's really clever and they made it really easy to use. So I'm gonna do that all the time now as far as uh, shooting with my DSLR. Works really well. So to get started, um, I'm going to take you to here at the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm at Battery Spencer uh, near the North Tower of the bridge. And I wanted to choose a place that everyone around the world knows so that when we look through the geotags, it'll have some meaning. Uh, so I'm going to start here. I'm going to go to the north end of the bridge and then head across the bridge to the south Vista Point, get some photos there, head back north to North Vista Point, and then take a trail under the bridge down to Horseshoe Bay. And then we'll end the photo walk there. And so I have the clock on my camera synchronized with the clock on my phone. And I'm going to start uh, this app, uh, start recording a new trip. And so it's recording now. We'll see how the battery holds out. And so let's start the photo walk. Well, it's been about a couple hours of walking, but I made it back to Horseshoe Bay. And you have the uh, Presidio Yacht Club behind me. And so, I'm, uh, I'll am i take one last photo, this time with the camera. And so, wow, my exposure is way off. Try that again. Okay. So that will be the last photo of this track, and now I'm going to turn off the uh, Geotag Photos Pro track. And so now it has all the locations that I was at, time coded and location coded. And so now I'm going to email it to myself. There's other ways to uh, get this to you, uh, but I just find emailing it's the easiest. So now I'm going to go back, I'll upload the photos, upload this GPS track, and We'll link them together. I've imported all the photos I took on that photo walk into Lightroom. So let's take a look and you can see where I started at the battery Spencer and took a look around, crossed the bridge and then came back to North Vista Point and then came down to Cavallo Point. Then remember I took a photo of the camera afterwards and that's what I ended up with right here. Okay. And so now what do we do? Well, let's go to the map module right here. And now 
let's take a look at this part down here. Now, you have to be connected to the internet for all this to work, so make sure of that. So now I have all the photos in the film strip down here, and now let's load the GPX file, which I downloaded from my email. So I'll choose Load Tracking. And here, is, here it is in my Downloads folder, the .gpx file. I'll choose it. And here it shows where I went. Started up at Battery Spencer, went down the hill, let's see, and then I crossed the bridge, spent some time at the South Vista Point, headed back up the bridge, and ended up at Horseshoe Bay. So now, how do we get this onto our photos? Well, first let's go down to our film strip and press Command A or Control A on Windows to select all the photos in the film strip. Now let's go back to this little squiggly menu there. And then we'll say auto tag 31 selected photos. Now what this will do is it'll take the GPX data that it already has, use the time code on each of the points of that track, match it up with the corresponding photos time codes, and then automatically put a geotag on each of those photos in the right place. So now let's choose this auto tag 31 selected photos and see what happens. It says auto tag 31 photos. And now look at this. It shows these little tags on the map. So now what do these numbers mean? Well, that means at each of these locations, uh, at this last location, there's four photos. At this location, there's eight. 16 from this location, and at the south uh, Vista Point, there's three. I guess I didn't really take that many there. And it actually shows you a representative photo from each of those. And if you scroll through, you can see the different photos you took. Up here at Battery Spencer, you can see the different photos I took. I guess you go down here. There we go. Okay. Now, if you zoom in, you can get more detail. You notice they split apart. Some of these have little arrows underneath. That means that's the exact location where those photos are taken. So now let's take a look. Let's see up at Battery Spencer. Oh boy. Now you know my cat is meowing. I should have fed him before I started this video. And so let's take a look at these. And if you select this, Three, you can see three are selected, and that shows you these three photos that I took at Battery Spencer. Uh, let's make this a little bigger. And uh, let's see, there's another one here. And then I went to this little area. Let's select those. <clears throat> uh, this is where the uh, barracks used to be a long time ago at this fort. And then let's select down here. I took two photos, the uh, road leading to the Golden Gate Bridge and then one of Alcatraz. And then I took this little trail, took a photo here. That's from this trail. And you can see the North Tower behind the hill. Let's go down to the three photos I took at the South Vista Point. You can see one here, looking north. I went down here and took a couple. So you can see the difference in perspective. Then I headed back north. I went to the North Vista Point. I wonder if that's what these are. Yep. So you can see it's a little bit off. I wasn't standing in the road. I was actually closer to around here, I think, uh, taking photos of the bridge right there. And then I went back under the bridge, took a photo from here. A couple of them, you can see I'm actually below the approach to the bridge. And you can see when you select the photo, oops, when you select the photo, it'll actually show you where you took that photo. Little bounces there. So that's where I took this photo near the pier. So you can see a little bit of the pier here. 
Then I headed back to my car. That's where I took the photo of my camera. Not only that, you notice it automatically filled in the location information. These two are taken in Sausalito. Okay, now let's go to the south area. It's like just one photo. It says the Presidio in San Francisco, which is correct. This is the Presidio. So that's pretty amazing and uh, very easy to do. Didn't really have to do anything manually aside from start the uh, GPS app on my phone. And then you have to remember to stop it after you're done so that you don't run out your battery. Oh, and uh, on the battery, um, in my p particular case, this is an iPhone 4S. I started with uh, about 95% battery when uh, I was at Battery Spencer. Too many battery words here. Uh, when I ended up, I had about 60%. But that included taking some photos, checking emails, being on the internet. So I don't think that's too bad considering that was a couple hours worth of GPS tracking. Um, someone at Adobe said that uh, he ran his for nine hours, uh, started at 100%. At the end of nine hours, it was down to almost, I, I think he said about 10% or something, but pretty low. But that's after nine hours. So um, uh, it's a pretty practical thing to do. You can also use a dedicated GPS um, from uh, Magellan. Garmin is a little bit more difficult because they use a proprietary uh, track format but there are tools to convert from the proprietary format to .gpx. Lightroom expects a .gps fi uh, GPX file. And so, um, so make sure your GPS does that. Most iPhone and probably Android apps also export .gpx. For the particular app, um, I mentioned the one I used. There are many of them. I've heard that if you get a workout app that can export .gpx files, those are usually cheaper than the photography ones. So you may want to look for those. And so uh, hopefully this uh, was interesting. I, I'm really enthusiastic about it. Now anytime I go, sh go out shooting with my uh, DSLR, I uh, run this uh, GPS app to make sure they're, they're all automatically geotagged because, I don't know, that's really cool. And a lot of this stuff can get exported to other services like Flickr. So hopefully that was interesting and that I uh, hope you can try this yourself. And so I'll talk to you next time.